It is uh, April 12th, about 3 p.m. Uh, I'm starting the uh, the experimentation phase of uh, this work. Uh, that is, I'm trying to uh, try to reproduce the false positive uh, uh, blow tubes that uh, are contaminated blow tubes uh, contaminated with residue from sugar-free. Uh, breath freshening gum, specifically uh, dentine ice, uh, arctic chill, uh, the cinnamon version of dentine ice uh, to a much lesser extent, and perhaps the uh, Orbitz uh, spearmint flavor gum. Uh, primarily I'm concerned about the dentine ice arctic chill. Uh, in February my uh, Intoxilock device here uh, was uh, replaced for the uh, second time uh, on my way out, I spoke with the, uh, the technician there, Ruben. I asked him, hey, you know, we still haven't figured out what's causing these problems. You know, he already replaced the device once. It didn't, call, it didn't solve the problem. It came back fairly quickly. You know, wh wh what else can I do? You know, what else should I try? And he's like, oh, you know, yeah, you should try, uh, you know, getting rid of all your blow tubes. Okay, which apparently we're all contaminated or something. And he gave me two clean blow tubes. Uh, one's here. And, uh, one is, uh, here in my glove box. Okay. The one in my glove box, this tube, uh, actually was generating some, some false positive signal. And, uh, a few weeks ago. And, uh, so I, I took it out and I got a brand new one out, which is still, uh, I'm still using it, the device. And I took this one out and I tried cleaning it, uh, with, uh, regular soap and water, um, uh, and then soaking it in water. Uh, you know, I, I would suspect that anything that's on there is going to be at least water soluble. I haven't used any uh, any uh, more aggressive, let's say, solvent such as uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol, which is common rubbing alcohol, or uh, anything else. Um, I, I'm just going to start with this. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do here is. Uh, hopefully get a clean signal or see where I'm at with the uh, the blow tube I've been using here, which has been giving me some low false positives, nothing uh, I'm particularly concerned about. Uh, so, uh, and I've been getting, you know, flat zeros uh, lately. So I'm going to wrench my mouth out three times here, and then I'm going to uh, generate a baseline result with the, uh, the uh, blow tube I currently have installed. Uh, let's see where I'm at. <sighs> Otherwise, uh, I probably had a couple cup of cough, couple cups of coffee today. I've had some Crest Pro Health whitening toothpaste. Uh, I believe I had some mint Girl Scout cookies last night. Uh, that's well over 12 hours ago at this point. I think I might have had a muffin or something this, you know, overnight or something. Uh, but more or less, haven't had anything uh, to eat, uh, to my knowledge, in I'd say you know, a good eight hours or so. Just uh, some coffee, if no sugar, no cream, just black coffee water, toothpaste. That's it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, generate uh, a baseline result here with the, uh, the uh, device, figure out where we're at. Okay, so I just generated a, uh, a, a .000 flat score on the, uh, the device. So, uh, you know, I believe that this blow tube here, I'm going to call it blow tube A uh, for this video, is uh, more or less clean. I don't believe it's perfectly clean. I've been using it for at least weeks, and I know I've gotten some, uh, some false signals off of it. Uh, so I'm going to switch to, uh, 
the this blow tube, which was I believe previously contaminated with something, you know, and I, I did some reading. It says like uh, <clears throat> sugar-free gums or sugar-free substances or whatever, sugar substitutes are known to to, to cause false 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 positives on uh on these fluid cell breathalyzer devices. I, I now know this is a fluid cell device. At least I suspected this from the documentation from the Intoxilot company I briefly looked at. And uh, yeah, I read a lawyer uh, post, posting uh, from Massachusetts who said sorbitol, which is a common uh, substance in uh, sugar-free gums or whatever, a sweetening uh, sugar analog or something, is well known to cause false positives in, in breathalyzers. So this is, you know... Uh, yeah, should be no surprise, and uh, why I wasn't told about this, you know, when there's, you know, you can Google, you know, uh, you know, false positive, you know, breathalyzer or something, and figure this information out in minutes, you know, why I wasn't told about this when I got the device, why Ruben didn't tell me about it, you know, why, I, why the Secretary of State doesn't tell me about it, you know, uh, there's some serious problems here, you know, with people who are responsible for these devices, uh, not, not, uh, yeah, not doing anything close to due diligence. You're being grossly irresponsible. Moreover, I got a doc, I got a document from the Intoxiloc, uh, company. They actually claim they have absolutely no false positives. Really? Jeez, what type of fraud is that? Uh, okay, so this thing is, uh, whatever, the countdown has expired here. I'm putting, uh, br uh, blow tube, uh, A in my glove box here and I'm gonna get you know get out blow tube B here which I, which should be clean I hope is clean and uh, it previously had a low level of contamination um, I think I might have had one failure startup failure with this blow tube which is why I took it out and switched to the other blow tube Okay, so here we go with the hopefully clean blow tube B. Okay, the unit's resetting for some reason. I gotta wait 24 seconds here. The blow tube itself visually looks fairly clean. Uh, there might be some scratches on the outside. It's hard to tell what's a scratch and what's what's residue. Yeah, I certainly, you know, did a, did a low level. Basically, I soaked this. I soaked this thing in soap and water, you know, for a good 24 hours or so. And then I soaked it in, you know, I rinsed it in just regular water, uh, you know, for, you know, days. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so a perfectly flat score, which is what they always were for 18 months until this problem started up. So um, uh, the idea here is uh, I'm going to go out and get uh, some Arctic ice, there's some dentine ice, Arctic chill gum, some uh, Orbitz spearmint gum. Uh, I got rid of all the stuff I had. Uh, I just you know, wanted it uh, uh, you know, away from me, so I wouldn't be tempted to use it or something. I, I, I use Altoids uh, mints, which are, are not sugar-free. They have sugar in them. You know, and again, the, the irony here is, is that uh, the brief, you know, I, I glanced briefly at the piece of paper they gave me almost two years ago. Uh, I haven't really looked at it since. And, you know, uh, the, the thing to avoid was sugar products or sugar, you know, things that have sugar in them because those generate false positives. Here it's exactly the opposite. Here the sugar products, which include ice cream and Altoids mints, uh, yeah, there's no problem. And I didn't have a problem with them for 18 months or whatever and uh, still don't. But the sugar-free ones do have a problem. You know, so it's exactly backwards, you know. You know, instead of avoiding sugar products, you should avoid the, quote, sugar-free products. You know, uh, and again, you know, even after raising this issue explicitly with American Interlock and the Secretary of State, uh, yeah, nothing. And uh, you can figure this out, that there's a problem with sorbitol, at least, in sugar-free products, you know, literally, like, within seconds, just by using Google. 
you know, you just Google, you know, whatever, false positive, you know, breathalyzer or something, and yeah, it immediately comes up. Okay, likewise, there immediately uh, is information coming up that these breathalyzer manufacturers deny it falsely, you know, where they obviously know or should know, okay, they have to know, you know, you know, that, that their, their products are defective this way. And, uh, yeah, you know, they explicitly deny it. So, um, anyways, yeah, I don't have any gum here now. Uh, I'm going to go get some and, uh, I'm going to come back here and, uh, try to set this thing off, deliberately generate a, uh, a, uh, startup, startup failure or whatever, or at least generate a false positive signal. Uh, with uh, dentine ice arctic chill flavor gum and uh, you know go from there uh, the only question I have is my previous experience with these gums is it wasn't immediate you know I it, it, this is why I couldn't figure out what it was I, you know I'm positive that the blow tubes were contaminated now with something from these gums but it wasn't very simple and it may take hours or days or something for all I know there may be some reaction that takes place in the blow tube that takes time to uh, to generate these false positives. You know, I, I have no idea. I haven't reproduced this before. And, uh, you know, my previous experience indicates that it didn't happen immediately. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I just chewed dentine ice gum and then blew into it and got a false positive. Okay, we'll see what happens now. But that's not what it looked like before. And that's why it was, you know, difficult somewhat to figure out what was going on here. Uh, cause it was a lot more subtle. It seemed to build up over time. And, um, yeah, I don't expect necessarily to instantaneously be able to reproduce it. I'd like to, okay. I'd love to be able to, you know, chew on dentine eyes, you know, and then blow into this thing, get a signal. But, uh, I, this isn't really what I was observing before. So we'll see.